What are the best practices for revisiting and reprioritizing the product backlog? Well, first up, I have to tackle the best practice thing. Get rid of the idea, okay? Very little of your work is gonna fall into the world of best practice. Some of it might fall into the world of good practice, but actually, a lot of it is emergent, it's novel. You have to make stuff up. You have to work it out as you go along. There are patterns that we can use, of course, the good practices, okay? learn them. So I'm not gonna tell you the best practice because there's no one way of doing this. There's lots of things and the way you choose will depend on the context you find yourself in. So how can we work with revisiting and reprioritizing a product backlog? Well, the trick here is product backlog refinement. This came about largely as a community. We were agile, we were super agile. We didn't do looking ahead. We walked into sprint planning and we had no idea what was on the backlog, right? We couldn't deliver what was most important to the customer because we didn't understand it. We hadn't looked at it. We hadn't asked questions. We hadn't talked about it. We were clueless, right? And there was a realization that maybe, maybe that was a bad idea. Okay. So refinement came about slowly, largely as a community effort. And what we thought was, well, talking about something beforehand, asking questions that are going to take time to answer, uncovering things by breaking information down, playing with it as a team will help us when we walk into sprint planning because we'll have seen stuff already. We'll have asked the questions that take time. We'll have uncovered in whatever way we have the new tools, the new technologies, the new skills that we might need to solve the problems. Okay? And that is the best practice I can give you for revisiting and reprioritizing a product backlog. Do refinement and do it well. Take time doing it. Scrum used to recommend about 10% of your team's total capacity in product backlog refinement. And it's not a bad starting place. As a team, spend about 10% of your time understanding upcoming work, both short term and the longer term. In the more immediate thing, what are the problems we're being asked to solve? You're going to talk a little bit about how do we solve them. You, know, you put engineers in a room and you ask them to talk about a problem, of course they're going to think about solutions. Okay, but the focus isn't on how do we solve it, it's what is the problem in the first place. So we've got to break things down to create understanding, to uncover things in case we need to ask questions, break open assumptions even. Okay? Product backlog refinement is the place for all of that. It's the place for looking ahead further down the line and thinking, what are the skills that we need in the future? What are the tools we need in the future? Do we have all the people we need? Right? It's asking the bigger picture questions that might take longer to get things in place. And from those conversations, you can start looking at the order of your backlog and thinking, well, we're in a place where we can take this stuff on, but we can't do that yet because we don't have the questions that we need answers to. Or we don't even have the questions. We haven't worked that bit out. We've got to do some research, some experimentation. Okay. People want a lot of the world of Agile to be simple or simplified. Whereas actually it's inherently messy because things shift and change. You learn a thing and that has a knock-on effect somewhere else, often somewhere you didn't expect. So it's not about getting all your ducks in the row before you start. It's about getting enough ducks in the row before you start, knowing that you have the skills, the capability and the agility to get them all in the row before you're done. So there are no best practices, not in the agile world really. I'm not really a fan of the phrase in our context, though it does have its place outside of it. But when it comes to coming back to the product backlog, to revisiting it, to refining it, to reprioritizing it, to reordering it, take your time as a team for product backlog refinement. Most of the teams that I've worked with over the last few years that have been struggling, that have had things go wrong in sprint, that have really struggled to get through planning in any meaningful way, we've had to go all the way back to product backlog refinement and unpick what they're doing and help them understand the need to have good, deep conversations about what the problems are that people are asking them to solve so that they can uncover the questions that they need answers to, that they can highlight gaps in their knowledge, that they can highlight gaps in their systems, their processes, whatever it is that they need 
to start fixing. And when they get those in place, sprint planning becomes easier. They're able to talk about the things that matter, the things that the customer wants next, not just what they can work on. They're able to go into sprints understanding the problem because a lot of our job is just that. Solving a problem is so much easier when you know what the problem is. Take the time, use refinement to understand the problem so that when you go into the sprint, you solve the right one. I can't give you much more than that.